Hello, this is Troy Whittington, and uh, today we're going to talk about the Trilogy Ventilator. It's uh, something we're seeing much more of in the hospital, and there's been a lot of misunderstanding and miscommunication about it, and we're going to try to make an attempt to get everyone on the same page. Uh, this is the Trilogy Ventilator uh, on a child. It can be used uh, invasively or non-invasively, non-invasively in this case. Um, we're going to look at uh, the different types of trilogies, the setup and key features, uh, trilogy modes of ventilation, volume and pressure, oxygen features of the trilogy. Uh, we're going to look at dual prescription and then converting someone from a hospital vent to a trilogy vent. And we'll look into AVAPs and the ST mode and the digital auto track sensitivity. Uh, this is the ventilator. It has a passive and active circuit. The passive circuit is what we will use here in pediatrics 99% of the time because of the modes that it allows us to use. The active circuit is used mainly on COPD, COPD patients and adults. We may use it once in a while here, but very, very rarely. The Trilogy 202 is the hospital's version of this ventilator. It has a 50 PSI uh, outlet for the oxygen, and the oxygen FiO2 is controlled on the screen digitally. This ventilator is portable. Uh, you can go six to eight hours with a fully charged battery, and you can uh, add more batteries if you want. Uh, this is a key part <clears throat> in the circuit. It's called a whisper swivel or a whisper valve. Um, this is what allows the patient to exhale. So the Trilogy is the only ventilator that uses one hose to do everything. They breathe in through the circuit and they breathe out through the whisper swivel. We do carry this as a standalone piece, but we also carry it in a circuit that looks like this. It doesn't come off, but this is the passive circuit that we uh, at TCH carry. And this is what it looks like hooked up to the ventilator on a stand uh, with everything hooked up. This is the easiest way to do it because then you can just push everything at once. Uh, this is the active circuit we carry. It has uh, two pressure lines on it, and this is the way it looks hooked up to a vent with the pressure lines attached to the back. You will need um, a few adapters which we carry to, to make everything fit. Uh, as far as uh, volume modes on the Trilogy, we have AC, VC, SIMV. Uh, the Trilogy also has something called uh, mouthpiece ventilation, <clears throat> which is someone like a, a muscular dystrophy patient uh, could have this with a mouthpiece and they could actually give themselves pressure support uh, just by breathing on it. It's called a KISS trigger. It has signal flow technology and this will actually do pressure support up to 40. I haven't seen this, but there are some RTs that say they have uh, seen this around. Uh, pressure modes, we actually use this much more. Uh, we have CPAP, then we have S, ST, and T modes, which the Trilogy identifies those three as forms of BiPAP. Of those, the ST mode is what we use the most. We found that to be the most flexible um, because you can have a rate, uh, an I time, I'm, I'm sorry, you have a rate, an IPAP, and an EPAP. Uh, we have pressure control also, SIMV, PC. AVAPS AE is something you'd use with an active circuit, so we just use regular AVAPS. As far as oxygen goes with the Trilogy 100, um, that's your home version, and it is because you bleed in oxygen from a tanker concentrator uh, with O2 tubing, and you do that through a port in the back of the vent. And uh, the hospital version, the 202, uh, uses a 50 PSI hose, and your oxygen is changed digitally on the screen. You also have a 100% O2 option on that ventilator. So after a lot of discussion, we came up with, uh, this is what ideally we would like to do. Um, TCH would like to follow the manufacturer's recommendation for bleeding in oxygen to the back port of the Trilogy 100 and 200 at a maximum flow rate of eight. Any higher than that, and there is a possibility that it can interfere with the patient breath trigger sensitivity, causing dyssynchrony with the vents. However, if your patient comes in with a proximal bleed-in setup that they use at home, it's okay to leave it as is, but do not increase the flow or make any changes to the home vent. Should the, home, the patient need more uh, oxygen support, they should be transitioned to a hospital ventilator, meaning a hospital trilogy, because you can modify the FiO2 on the screen. And then as their condition improves, they can be transitioned back to their home trilogy with the same settings they came in with. 
Um, so if they come in with a proximal bleed end of one liter, ideally we would only like to use one liter. <clears throat> um, on the screen, you also have your 100% FiO2 option. You simply hit the button and it'll ask you, are you sure you hit yes? Boom, boom, one minute, 100% option. Dual prescription, uh, much like the Draeger, the Trilogy has a way for you to program two sets of settings and use one or the other. Some patients will use one set during the day and another set at night, and you can toggle back and forth between them. Uh, if you look at the screen here, it'll say passive one, SIMV, meaning you're in a, what's called a primary setting. If you want to look at your primary settings, you can highlight primary settings and alarms. If you want to look at your secondary settings, highlight secondary settings and alarms. And if you want to switch, you'll highlight switch to secondary settings. When you hit it, it will say passive two, meaning you are in secondary setting. You can also switch back uh, to the primary if you wish. Uh, ST and AVAPS mode. Okay. Um, ST mode is... It is kind of versatile. It's going to ask you for an IPAP and an EPAP, and the difference between the two is your pressure support. You have to be in ST mode in order to act, to access AVAPS. Once you're in AVAPS, you have an IPAP minimum and an IPAP maximum. Your pressure support is auto-adjusted, so it's not set. So when we're converting someone from a hospital vent <clears throat> to a trilogy, you, we have to keep in mind that there are certain modes and terminology that are going to be slightly different. Um, Epic hasn't quite caught up with the trilogy just yet. So if someone says, look, we want to put this child on a CPAP press support on the trilogy, um, you're never going to see a mode on the trilogy that says CPAP press support, and you're never going to see the word BiPAP on the trilogy. What you're going to see is ST mode. <clears throat> and ST mode asks you to set an IPAP and EPAP. The difference between those two is going to be your pressure support. The kicker to all this is that it, your pressure support value will not show up on the screen. It is calculated. This is what seems to be throwing a lot of people off because it's not something you can physically see. AVAPS is another popular mode that's <clears throat> exploding in popularity. It means average volume assured pressure support. To activate AVAPS, you have to be in S, ST, T, or PC modes, ST being the most, pop, most popular mode we use. You have to be in the mode first, and then you activate or turn the AVAPS option on. Once you do that, you are in AVAPS, you will chart AVAPS. Then you have an IPAP max and an IPAP minimum that must be ordered. These are the settings that uh, once you go into AVAPS, it's going to ask you to set. EPAP, IPAP minimum, IPAP maximum, tidal volume, rate, and I time. The only thing conspicuously missing from all of this is pressure support because AVAPS automatically adjusts pressure support to maintain a targeted tidal volume by allowing IPAP to fluctuate within given parameters. So it automatically adapts to changing patient needs. <clears throat> so by allowing your IPAP to fluctuate, your pressure support must therefore fluctuate. You can do this with uh, non-invasive or invasive modes. You also have something called an AVAPS rate. This is not a breathing rate. Some people are getting confused. Um, AVAPS rate allows you to adjust the maximum rate at which the pressure support changes. It can be set from one to five. Now, the higher you go, the faster it will, uh, the faster it will allow pressure support to change, sort of like a rise time. Uh, the benefits of AVAPS <clears throat> is that it targets a uh, consistent tidal volumes throughout its use. Um, what they really what they really used to market uh, the ventilator was a more effective management of CO2, resulting in reduced hospital stays. Uh, who uses AVAPS? Any patient that experiences hypoventilation, CF patients, BPD, uh, MD, ALS, pulmonary fibrosis, spinal trauma, a large part of our uh, patient population suffers from this. And again, you can do this invasively or non invasively. Uh, digital auto track is the brain behind all of this, really. It's the algorithm that the ventilator uses uh, to automatically adjust breath by breath the triggering and cycling mechanisms. Uh, its application has the objective of reducing patient effort, improving patient comfort, and making assisted ventilation as close to neural activity as possible by recognizing and compensating for leaks. 
So what it's really doing is it's trying to mimic your natural breathing pattern and adapt to changes in it automatically. And it can only be done with a passive circuit, hence we use the passive circuit the most. And that was yet another big selling point that they used uh, to sell trilogies. And apparently this is working because a lot of people like it. Now, um, you also have, um, it's okay. You also have uh, auto track and what's called sensitive auto track. Sensitive auto track is literally just a more sensitive version of auto track. If you have a patient that's smaller and can't pull the kind of volumes a bigger patient can, sensitive auto track would be for them because it will sense more of their effort and pick up more of their breath. And that's it, folks.